Do you know why we have a hard time talking with God? Who can, who can answer this? Do you know how we have, why it is difficult? You can pray and still miss God. The Bible actually says that when we start praying in depth of the Spirit, it says, and the Spirit helps us to pray with groanings that words cannot utter. How is it that the whole earth at a point in time everybody could talk the same language. Everybody spoke the same language. When Adam was in the garden, he could interact with God normally. Adam never said, and the word of the Lord came to me. God will come, Adam will talk, and God will talk, and that's the end of it. But as we advanced in our walk with God, we lost the language of God because we lost our spiritual nature. Because the language of God is the language of breath. Ah. Every human being inside you is encoded a language that God responds to. This is why some people like, like I could come to somebody and hear God's voice, but we are all in the same location, but you can't hear it. If you look in the book of Revelation, it says, let him that has an ear hear. How is God telling me to have an ear to hear? Yet I have an ear, but I can't hear him. But the Bible describes God as being spirit. It said the Lord God is spirit. And the word spirit is breath, not just air, breath. Or in Hebrew, it's ruach, meaning breath, not the wind, breath. So you don't hear God, not because your spiritual ears are shut. It's because when God speaks to you, you have no ability to perceive because your inner man is not able to respond to the breath of God. Wow. <laughs> when God wants to transfer his nature into a man, he does it by his breath. He doesn't do it by praying for you. He doesn't do it by laying hands on you. God transfers his nature into another man by breathing on them. When God created everything, he never used his breath. Whatever is going to be animate to carry his nature, God has to breathe. True impartation of one spirit to another is only done by breath. <laughs> is somebody getting what I'm saying? So God is forming man. After he forms man, instead of just saying, be alive, what does God do? <sighs> man becomes conscious. Man becomes alive. And man is the one created in his image. You see, of everything that God created, if you look in Scripture, the only one that received breath was man. Even angels are not product of his breath. Even though they are spiritual beings, they are not product of his breath.
Whenever the Holy Spirit manifested, what does he say? A mighty rushing wind came because God is breathing. Okay, I'm... Uh, uh, I, I don't know if you're capturing where we're going so far. Have you ever been in prayer sometimes? You feel like wind is blowing. You open your eyes, there's no window open, and then you're like, God is speaking at that time by breathing on you, but you have no capacity to speak the language of the wind. Yet your inner man is also... Uh, <laughs> You are expecting to hear a sound. That is why the voice of God is called a still small voice. It's whispers. Why is it a whisper? You are expecting a loud voice. No. It doesn't work like that. You have lost your capacity to capture wind. This is the revelation behind why I blow on people. You'll understand in a little bit. Let me show you something. And then we'll go deep. Uh, are you still here? Yes. If you're capturing me so far, just uh, push number one. We're going somewhere. Uh, Okay, here it comes. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 19. From verse 19 to 23. John 20 from 19 to 23. John chapter 20. Mm -hmm. And in verse 19. Mm -hmm. And it reads... Then the same day at evening, mm -hmm. being the first day of the week, mm -hmm. when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for mm -hmm. fear of the Jews, mm -hmm. came Jesus and stood in the midst mm -hmm. and saith unto them, yeah. Peace be unto you. Mm -hmm. And when he, said, when he had said so, he shewed unto them his hands and his side. Mm -hmm. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Mm -hmm. then, Jesus, then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I, end you. I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. Notice, is, no, notice this. Jesus wants to activate them into a realm that is sending them. The first thing that Jesus does he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Wait, what? Why is God doing the same thing he did with Adam? Why is Jesus blowing on them, saying, receive ye the Holy Spirit? Then he tells them, gather, wait for the promise until you get to Jerusalem, stay together, and the Spirit will descend upon you. You see, you cannot have the Spirit of God descend on you unless he has breathed on you. You see, there are things that are in realms... There are things that are in dimensions. Let me read you what Job said, and then I will break some things down for you, and I hope that it will build you to understand what I'm saying. Job chapter 33, verse 4. Job 33 and verse 4. Job 33, verse 4. And it reads, The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. One more time. The Spirit of God hath made me, 
and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. So how do we know somebody is dead? Is when they are no longer breathing. When somebody is no longer breathing, they are dead. The evidence of them being alive is that their breath has made them alive. But if you go to hospital, somebody can be on a breathing machine, but their brain is no longer functioning. And there are people who are alive, walking, but the breath in them has no purpose. What is in them cannot give anybody life. You see, the Bible says that Jesus became a life-giving spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? A life-giving spirit. So the evidence of you being empowered by the Holy Spirit is not just to speak in tongues, even though tongues are good. It's not just to pray. Praying is good. This is not the only thing that proves it. You see, when you speak the word of God, something should happen, right? Right? Why is it that so many people are speaking and nothing is changing? You realize that the Bible doesn't say words have power. It says the power of life and death is in the tongue. It doesn't say it's in the words. The reason why the devil needs words to be powerful is because the devil only can affect your soul. Hurtful words will hurt you, not your spirit, but your soul. They can inspire anger in you. But when it comes to words that will empower your spirit, it is not in the weight of the words, but it is in the breath that is sending the word. Every time you speak, you're breathing. That's why you, <sighs> you cannot speak without producing, without breathing. Breath is part of your voice projecting. And what many of you don't understand that is that every time you speak, you have an opportunity to release your spirit. That is why the Lord Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Meaning the mouth is connected to your inner man. That when you speak, you are bringing out things that are within you. But those things are encoded in the wind that is in you, in the breath that is in you. So if I want to declare an open door, but I don't have the breath of God in me, even though what I have said is good, it does not carry the life to produce something. Uh, So I can speak positively. I can speak amazing sounding things. I can declare exciting things. I can do all those things. But if I don't have the breath of God in me, then my words amount to nothing. That is why speaking positive is great. Nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean things will change. But there are certain people, if they say something to you, something changes. It's because the words, Jesus said it like this. He says, the words I speak to you, they are spirit. Notice he said they are breath and they are life. He is saying the same thing I did to Adam. Every time I am speaking to you, I am speaking the same spirit that produces life. 
That's what Jesus is saying. He's saying the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And God breathed into man and man became a living soul. So Jesus was not just speaking. He was distributing his nature into situations every time he spoke. When Jesus looked at Lazarus, he says, Lazarus, get up. The spirit of life went into, uh, uh, into, 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 into what is Lazarus. And Lazarus came back to life. He began to breathe. Why? The words that Jesus spoke, they were carrying his breath. It entered Lazarus and Lazarus came to life. No different from Adam. So it is not the breathing. It's that the words of God, they are spirit, they are breath. So every time you speak, you are producing your spirit. This is why somebody, when they want to destroy you, when you speak, you can reveal what is going on in your life. When you speak, you can reveal how you think. The spirit within you will always be reflected by what comes out of you. This is what the Lord Jesus said it like this. He says, it's not what goes into man that makes man to sin, but it's what comes out of him. When something happens, what are you quickly inclined to do? Tells what is inside of you. Jesus wants to impart life. Okay, let me give you an example. The Bible says life is in the blood, right? The Bible says that, right? Life is what? In the blood. So did you come, did you receive the life of God because the blood of Jesus came on you? Huh? I'm asking a genuine question. How did you receive the life of God? How did you? Huh? The Holy Spirit came on you. You are born of the Spirit of God. You are born of the wind. <laughs> when he says life is in the blood, it is talking about two different things, but you need to be spiritual to understand. The blood of Jesus was shed to appease God, to take away God's anger against us. Because as far as we are concerned, Adam was breathing. Adam had blood flowing in him, but God said he's dead. And when Adam was cast out of the presence of God, you see interaction of God and Adam dwindled. David prays in Psalms 51, Lord, don't take your spirit from me. Don't take your breath from me. Take everything, but that one don't take. When Saul was abandoned by God, how did God prove that he abandoned him? God took his spirit. And the Spirit of God departed from him. The breath of God departed from him. You have no power in your words because you're operating with words instead of the Spirit. Your words need to be loaded with the breath of God. Words are supposed to be spiritual, not natural. That is why you say I'm blessed and highly favored and nothing actually proves any favor of God on your life. Why is it that when we want to release a blessing on somebody, we have to speak blessing? Why is it just not automatic? And why is it that not everybody can bless? Everyone can say good things, but not everyone has the power to bless. Because in order for you to bless, it is determined by what wind is inside of you. Many of you speak good words, but things are still going bad. You declare good things, but things are still going south. 
Because the Spirit of God does not just inhabit your body. The Spirit of God must possess your words. Because everything that God ever created, He created by words. So we know it is by words that things are transferred spiritually. When God told Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones, God said, can these bones live again? Is it 37, Ezekiel 37? Can these bones live again? Say, ah, only you know, Lord. Say, tell these bones, I'll breathe my breath on you. Bones don't breathe. Why are you breathing on bones? Somebody go to Ezekiel 37. <laughs> Ezekiel 37. Uh -huh. Verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and mm -hmm. carried me out in the spirit of the Lord mm -hmm. and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones mm -hmm. and caused me to pass by them round about. Mm -hmm. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And he said unto me, Prophesy upon the bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. So dry situations need the breath of God. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Dead situations need the breath of God. Whenever God wanted to make something alive, he breathed on it. Amen. Amen. Okay. Dead, dead situation. Remember, Matthew chapter 6, God doesn't like too much talking. You know that. said, many speak so many things, thinking by them they will be heard. So God doesn't hear you because you prayed for two hours. God doesn't hear you because you prayed for six hours. That is not a bad thing, but it's not a necessary thing. But the Bible says Jesus prayed all night. The reason why God doesn't care about too much speaking is because you are speaking in the flesh, not in the spirit. Wow. In 1 Corinthians, I believe, 14, Paul says this. If I speak a language that the other doesn't understand, I will be a barbarian unto him and he shall be a barbarian unto me. Many of you are talking to God and God is like, what are you even saying? And God is speaking to you and you're like, what, what, what? I didn't hear anything. There is a conflict of language because God doesn't change. God is the same. He's an unchangeable changer. But we need to rise to where God is. So if you're waiting for God to meet you where you are in terms of how he speaks, you have played yourself. God is talking to bones and said, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live again. Before even flesh. Before lungs. Before anything, he said, I will breathe on you. The Holy Ghost experience... To know that you are filled with the Spirit is not that you just pray. You see, to be filled by the Spirit of God is in stages. When Jesus breathed on the apostles, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Did Jesus lie? No. They received the Holy Spirit. Before he ascended, he breathed on them, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Then he told them, wait until the Spirit has come upon you. You go to Acts, I believe, chapter 2 is when the day of Pentecost fully came, right? It says, and there was a world wind in the room. Crazy wind blew in the room. The breath of God came on them again. 
And the Bible says, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then it goes on again. Peter and John go to the temple. They get whooped for healing a man who could not walk. They go back home and they pray. God answers them. He says the room that they were in was shaken. And the spirit of God came and filled them again. And they had boldness. Notice that your experience with the Holy Spirit is made available. You see, you think that when the Holy Spirit descends on you, he fills what you have made available. If you have not been broken, then the next part he needs to fill, he cannot until that part is given up. So God will fill what you made available. Then you go through life and then something will happen. You surrender to God more. Then the Holy Spirit fills that part that you surrendered again. Then you keep walking with him. Something again happens. That you are broken into pieces. Then you realize you need to give that part to God. He comes and takes that place. He fills it again. Until every inch of you is filled. Your tongue is filled. Your ears are filled. Your eyes are filled. That when you speak, it is God speaking. When you breathe, it is God breathing. That whatever environment you're in, when you just sit there and you're interacting with people, just your presence in somebody's life, things begin to get better because the breath of life is flowing. <coughs> is this making sense to somebody? This is where you find some men of God that will love God. They are faithful with God. There are places in their life that are better than others. You find them cursing people. <coughs> One minute they say, they speak like this in the dark. Ah, F-bombs, S-bombs, all kinds of bombs are coming out of them. Yet James is saying, can sweet waters spring with unclean waters? Something is wrong. And what did he mean by springs of sweet waters? Remember I taught you yesterday in service when Jesus said to the woman, do you want living waters? I can give you water that you will not thirst again. And the woman said, sir, give me this water that I don't thirst, that I don't need to come here. Jesus said to her, all right, where's your husband? Jesus began to speak to her. Jesus changed, he entered spiritual language. And the woman left there and said, I have met a man that has told me everything about my life. This man has mended my life. Why did he, why did she do that? Because she received water. Meaning water is the prophetic word that comes from you. When he says rivers of living water shall flow out of your bellies, it is not talking about the Holy Spirit. Churches say that and I'm like, what are you guys reading? Ah, Holy Spirit, uh, rivers of living waters. No. If you understand spiritual things, you understand that your spirit indwells your belly. Your spirit is here, is not here. Your spirit is in here. So when it's saying out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water, it's saying from your spirit, Life-giving words will flow. That is why it says, you are a tree planted in, Le in Lebanon. You are a tree planted by the river. What yet you are in the desert. How is this making sense? He's saying you are a tree planted where everything is dry, but your words will produce life. Your words will water the desert and turn it into something else. The stream of water is now when the breath comes out. Life. We know everything physically is made alive by water, not spiritually. So it's talking about words that have been released they have been converted into something that can give life to what is around.
What kind of words are you speaking? What kind of words are coming out of you? The Bible says it like this. Let everything that has breath, not everything that has a mouth. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord, not everything that has a mouth. Let everything, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Not everything that has a mouth. Meaning I don't need a mouth to praise God. I need breath. I don't need to shout to praise God. I need breath. What kind of breath is proceeding from you? When the Lord God... wanted to lift and raise prophets in Israel. He said, hey Moses, I will take your breath <laughs> and put it in them. Yeah. The only thing that enters you and becomes part of you is breath. Yeah. It goes straight into you. When the Lord Jesus appeared to me years ago, he told me, whenever you pray for people, you shall blow on them. I asked him, why? He said, because what is inside your spirit will transfer to them. When the young boy died, where Elisha was, Elisha said, Lord, why have you taken this young boy, knowing that I live here? <sighs> he took the young boy, he said, Lord, give him back his spirit. He put the boy on the bed. He laid on the boy face to face and breathed, and the kid came back to life. CPR done at the right time, somebody comes well. <laughs> and that's physical. Are you listening to what I'm saying, children of God? This is why sometimes I just look at people and say, it's done. They're like, ah, but you didn't even pray for me. Then they come back next week. Oh my God, you will not believe what happened. Because you think it's just in speaking. No. It's what breath has preceded you. Has life been blown into your situation? Has God breathed into your situations? This is the mighty question. This is the big question. There is a way to get there. Amen. I said there's a way to get there. Amen. There is a mighty way to get there because it is our destiny, all of us. When somebody is sick, the Bible says that he sent his word and healed them. But what is his word? The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So every time there is somebody sick, God blows when somebody speaks. 
it goes to the leg, the leg gets healed. It goes to the lungs, the lungs get healed. It goes to any part of the body, it goes into any situation and the person gets healed. Not because their ears heard. Do you know why Jesus could heal you even if you, even if you did not have faith? Even though Jesus wanted to raise somebody's faith in order for them to make themselves well. But there's a man that came to him, he said, if you can do something, he said, help my unbelief. And Jesus said, where's your son? And Jesus was able to fix that situation. Jesus would get mad, he said, how long will I be with you? Because when Jesus spoke, he did not speak to the person, he spoke to the situation. You want healing, you want your heart to believe instead of your body part to hear it. I said something profound, but some people didn't hear it. Ah, some people missed it. Let's keep the thumbs up going. Let's get the thumbs up higher. This is why Peter and John could heal a man at the beautiful gate, asking them for silver and gold. And they healed the person by fire, by force. The person did not want healing. The person was not praying for healing. The person was not expecting healing. The person was only expecting silver and gold. No, you're not listening to me. The man was not praying for healing. It means that anybody that has the breath of God can bring deliverance and healing to people who did not even know they needed deliverance. They can bring transformation to people who did not know they even need transformation. Live alone, they believed in it, but they didn't even know that they need it. How many people have come to our church and I'll start praying, everybody begins to, even people who were shandala, ba, 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 all of a sudden you see them, ah, no, we don't want to live. Uh, uh, wait, how did that happen? Because the breath of life came. And when the, I, I'm talking to the wrong people. When the breath of life comes, anything that is of death must go. Do you, have, do you have the breath of God in your nostril? That when you speak, you see, everybody says, ah, whatever, is, whatever we bind on earth uh, shall be bound in heaven. Uh, whatever we loose on earth uh, shall be loosed in heaven. But nothing is ever changing. You miss the point. Jesus says, to you, I will give the keys. Jesus said, oh, whoever will speak to this mountain, whoever will speak to this mountain and tell it to drop itself in the sea, it will obey. Jesus could talk to a tree. The Bible actually says Jesus went to the tree, finding no fruit. Jesus answered the tree, meaning the tree spoke to him. It says, Jesus answered the tree, no one will eat of you. When the enemy speaks, when cancer speaks, when misfortune speaks, do you have the capacity to answer it? You are fighting with doctor's report instead of fighting the wind that spoke that. Jesus answered the tree. Jesus rebuked the wind. There is something that is responsible for what you're going through. <laughs> but if you don't have spiritual words, you can't address those things. Because to have spiritual words is to also have spiritual consciousness. Do you have the breath of God in you? That your words can produce life. You have the instruments of life, but you do not have the bullet of life. You have the lips. You have the tongue. But what loads that to produce life is not there.
They are shooting blanks. They can't do any damage to any demon. That's why you find some people and they're doing deliverance. They need to make people renounce. And there's somebody that will just say, hey, all of you out, ah, gone. Nobody needed to renounce anything. It's the amount of breath. Do you have a violent wind <laughs> that can be like a tornado that can sweep and take everything with it? Or do you have just regular wind that can make a demon uncomfortable, but you need to make them renounce certain things for things to live? <laughs> How much of the wind of the Spirit do you have? Oh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Let's keep those thumbs up going. Let's keep those thumbs up going. I want to show you how easy it is to enter. If you're ready, just type one that I know that you're ready. Isaiah 42 verse 5. Isaiah 42 and verse 5, and it reads, mm -hmm. Thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, mm -hmm. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, Mm -hmm. in spirit to them that walk it walk therein wow notice why is he saying he gives breath to the people on earth and spirits to the people that walk so you can have the spirit but you don't have the breath because there are people who are operating by the breath of god and their people are simply alive because of the spirit And the word became breath, and the word became flesh, meaning the spirit transformed. Acts 17.25. Acts 17.25. And it reads... Neither is worshipped with man, men's hands as though he needed anything, mm -hmm. seeing he giveth to all life mm -hmm. and breath and all things. Breath to all things. He doesn't only give life, but he gives breath to all things. Your account needs his breath. Uh, I'm talking... Your business needs his breath. Amen. Everything you do needs his breath. Amen. We need the breath of God. Amen. Now, how do we receive the breath of God? How do we receive the breath of God? Now, if life and death is in the power of the tongue, it means that it's not just enough to not speak negative words. There must be a spiritual element to your tongue. There must be a spiritual element to your tongue. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue and whoever love it, they shall eat the fruit of it. Right? So when the Bible says that by their fruits you shall know them, it's not talking about their deeds. He's talking about their words. What their words produce will tell you who they are. So when people read that, they think that by what people do, everybody has mistakes. But who can produce life shows who is with them. Cyrus was not a believer, but God was with Cyrus. Everything that Cyrus did, every king that he fought, he overcame them. 
God says, I have anointed him. So when he says, by their fruits you shall know them, he's talking about not by only the content of their words. What can their words produce? If you lived in the days of David, many of you would have called David fake. He murdered a man. If David had a church, nobody would go to his church. But you read his book, oh, a man after God's heart, you forget all the other messes that he had. Killed a man of women. He actually imparted that into Solomon. Solomon was even worse than him. <laughs> it's deep. <laughs> But the fruits of David were different. Because you see, the flesh will always have weaknesses. We will be perfected when we meet the Lord. We are heading into perfection. This is why the Bible says those who are in Christ are not condemned. Because God knows that we will make mistakes. It's obvious. Anyone who says they don't make mistakes, they don't sin, is the biggest liar in the world. So you see, the fruits of the Spirit... are what a man produces. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's not just what a man does, but what a man produces. The evidence that God is with somebody is by the life that is produced by that somebody. That is the evidence that God is with somebody. It's not simply because of good words. It's words that have an effect. A man that God is backing up. Usually people God will bring to this standard are a certain breed of people. The issue is so many don't want to be dealt with God in this way. That is why you cannot enter into that place. If God cannot break you, he cannot use you. If God cannot break you, God will not use you. If you build yourself, he will allow you to break to understand that it's not about you. When you understand that you are the body of Christ, then God is ready to use you. As long as you're trying to lead yourself, build yourself, do you in the name of God, he will let you be. You are still going to go to heaven because you confessed him. But for him to use you is a different case. Jesus is the word, he is not the mouth. So when the spirit of God comes into your life, he wants also your mouth. God wants your eyes. God wants your ears. God wants your feet. God wants your hands. God also wants your heart. The first thing when he comes in, he comes for your heart. Then after that, he wants to spread, your, he wants to spread himself through your being. Jesus wants to spread himself through your being completely. Any sign of self, he will reject that part. God will break you. He'll allow situation to come until you let go of self. When you realize, not, the moment you get to the place of your way, not my way. Your life, not my life. Paul said it like this, and the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. When you now become alive in him, you live by faith. The just shall live by faith. It does, you see, many of you confuse believing with faith. 
Believing is not faith. The devil believes in God, but the devil has no faith. <laughs> because faith is the substance of the future that God has ordained for his people. A destiny and a destination that God has ordained for his people. The devil has no future, so he has no capacity of faith. You are struggling with work because God is trying to break you. You are struggling in your relationship because God is trying to break you. You are struggling with finances because God is trying to break you. You are struggling with sickness. God is trying to break you. And whatever God will break, he will rebuild and he will use. And the breaking is taking away what Satan made part of you and what you made yourself to be and not what God wanted you to be. God has to get rid of that. Every situation in your life, listen to what it says, all things work for the good of those whom what? love him and who are called according to his will and purpose so all bad things don't work for you unless you love him and god chastises those whom he what loves you are thinking it's a devil no god is allowing it to break you he's trying to take away what satan put in you he's trying to show you what satan brought to you this is the key How is your mouth and how is your heart? How do you know that your mouth is ready to be used by God? Is when your heart has been transformed. Not out of hypocrisy. Not out of, uh, I will not do those. So, you see, when you have to think of not doing something bad, something bad is still in you. You are suppressing it. But when bad things happen and your first thought is to do good, you are delivered. Suppressing something does not mean you have not done it. If you think it to God, you have done it. So getting to the place whereby you don't need to sit there and, and say, okay, I am consciously not going to do this. You have to get to a place whereby I don't even want to do that for what? It is not even in you to do it. You are free. Amen. There are so many people in church that think they are free. And they are not. You may be free from demons, but you are not free from yourself. And you cannot cast you out. You can only break you. If you sit there and say, ah, I break myself in the name of Jesus, it will never work. Situations reveal you. Situations will check you. Situations will reveal you. So I repeat again. <laughs> Ah, this is deep. Only some people will really understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Honestly. Do you know why the Holy Spirit is the comforter? Because there are situations you have to go through, but it will comfort you. Yeah. But you have to go through it. Yeah. Christians are trying to avoid situations. Yeah, God is saying, that I am your comforter. Comforting me through what? Meaning there are situations I have to go through. There are some fires I have to go through. There's a hell I have to go through. There's a shadow of death I have to go through. There are places I have to enter, but he will keep me through those places. But there is a building up that God needs to do in me. 
So you need to ask yourself that. You need to ask yourself this sincerely, truthfully. What is in me? Am I broken? When they get wild horses, they have to break them. When you go in the military, they have to break you. Anything you do that they need you to be a better version of you, they have to break the old you. For you to join the army of God, he has to break you. God has to break us. When we prioritize things and people over him, he has to break us. Some of you have made your children God. Some of you have made your husband God. Many of you have made things and idolized things. God has to break that. God is not just a jealous God, but he's jealous for you. He wants all of you, not part of you. And sometimes when people have nothing, they love God, but they have not been broken. Because when they start getting things, they forget God. They were never broken. Their humility was because they have nothing. If you want to know you're very humble, when God blesses you, it will show. <laughs> it's deep. True humility, when you have the power to do things and you still cover yourself, it shows that you're truly humble. Humility is not just what you say, is who you are. God has to break us. You can be the most gifted person. You may have a great mighty grace over your life. But if Jesus has not broken you, ah, I am sorry, you're stuck. So I will ask one more time. Have thou been broken? Will you allow him to break you? Fasting doesn't break you. Because fasting is not a situation. Many of you fast because you want something from God. When you go hungry and you have nothing to eat and you still love him and depend on him, some of you, that's where God will move, not when you're fasting. <laughs> because your fasting is still based on you and what you want. And after you get what you want, he can't do what he wants with you. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will show us his mercy and grace and that by his spirit the Lord will mold us that his breath will flow through our breath that his spirit will move on our tongues that when we speak we will speak life we will speak the language of the spirit who will speak the language of the Spirit of God, which produces life. Father, we thank you that you are good. In Jesus' name, amen.